Here we need that hard picture up a hole. Hi, my name is Mike McKeon, and I'm a commissioner in Lower Marion Township and the chair of the Public Works Committee. I want to welcome everyone to the Lower Marion Public Works Show. With me today is Public Works Director Paul McElhaney. Uh, Paul, thank you for joining us today. Good morning. Um, and we have a very special show, I think, because we're going to do an overview of the entire Public Works Department in about 25 minutes or less. So, um, and it's a lot to cover, I think. It is indeed. Uh, so, Paul, what can you tell us about uh, what Public Works does generally for, for Lower Marion? For Lower Marine, uh, Public Works is made up of seven divisions. We handle uh, essentially infrastructure of the township. Uh, we keep things moving, uh, make everyday life possible. So we're made up of seven divisions. We have our fleet division that take care, takes care of all the equipment. We have our refuse department that picks up your trash. We have our sewer div division that takes care of the sewage. Um, we have our highway department that takes care of the roadways. We have our shade tree division that takes care of the right-of-way trees and trees in the park. We have our facilities division that takes care of all the township facilities and buildings. We have the electric shop that takes care of the street lights and the traffic lights and those type of things. And there's a fleet division. Did, we, did you say fleet? Maybe no, just, yes, I did right. say fleet. Yes. <laughs> and there's administration too. Yeah, right? there yeah. is administration, yes, which takes care of all the uh, service requests, all the billings, all the, all the, all the uh, incidentals that happen in all the departments. All right, and uh, there's the Kegel Complex, 1300 North Woodbine Avenue. What is the Kegel Complex for people who may not know what it is? Well, the Kegel Complex uh, has been referred to as the dump and so forth. It originally started in the, it was originally built in the 30s as our incinerator plant for the township of Lower Marion. Over time, it, it has turned, in, it turned into a transfer station along with it houses facilities for the fleet department, the highway department, the parks department, the shade tree department. The police also use part of the facility down there. But essentially, uh, this is where we take all of the trash that is then transferred to our, our waste hauler who takes it to the trash to steam plant up in Conchahokan. The recycling crews bring in the, the two forms of recycling, the co-mingle or the paper, and that is uh, where it is then deposited. Uh, and then our two vendors remove those those products from our facility also. And members of the public can go into the Kegel complex, different parts of it, right? Yes, they can. They can uh, for for disposing of recyclables, for disposing of regular trash, and for disposing of yard waste in the sense of, um, well, grass and those type of things go with the regular trash, but tree clippings, leaves, and those type of things. And then those items are then sent to our composting facility. And we turn them into compost and topsoil and things. That, that's that the 17-acre Waverly site, right? Correct, okay. out in the western end of the township. And that's where we t then take all the leaves that are collected from the residential collection, from contractors who come in, uh, landscapers and so forth. We take it out to that facility. We make mulch, topsoil, uh, all different types of products. Some of that is brought back for the general uh, use of the residents. They can pick it up at, at the Kegel Complex during normal business hours. Yeah, the, I think the way really site it's a little hard to see depending where you are because it's it's along the expressway. But if you're driving on on the expressway, actually, if you're riding on the expressway, you can look over and see it. If you're driving, you may not want to look over and, and right. Check but everything. It, but it, it, once you get past the uh, the Gladwin interchange, a little bit after that, you'll see a, an entire complex on the right hand side, and you'll see what we call wind rows, which are the leaves that are stacked up and. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a rather long linear um, complex that we have there. So if I rake a bag of leaves and I put it in one of those brown uh, bags, that there's a good chance that's going to end up at the Waverly site at some point. Well, if, 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 if you rake a bag of leaves and it's not contaminated um, with dirt, stones, um, bamboo, any of that kind of stuff, because the staff has to kind of look at that as they pick it up, then yes, it will make it to the Waverly site. Um, if you have a contaminated bag, unfortunately, no, we have to dispose of that. So we it, we really see the contamination in the spring. In the, in the spring. Yeah. yeah. So we ask, please, if you're conscious enough to, to bag, separate those things out. 
so that we can truly res uh, we can compost and uh, bring forward a, uh, a good product for the residents. Well, that makes sense, too, because in the fall, people can be overwhelmed with leaves, so you've got a lot of good leaves you're throwing in there in the spring. Uh, drier time, there may not be a lot of leaves, so they're dumping well, in Well, people are doing their spring cleanup. They're yeah. digging up their flower beds, and, and you get contamination. Um, I've almost done it myself, and I've caught myself and had to correct it. And with the, uh, the Kegel Complex, historically, I, I remember as a kid, we would go there on, the, I guess, the, the dump days or dump times, and you would th uh, throw things into a pit. Yes. Uh, that pit's been closed. Yeah, right? we, the pit was closed several years ago. Um, uh, at first, it was the, tra the county waste system closed. They, they did away with the waste system. We were looking at a quite expensive repair to the overhead crane system. Uh, safety issues uh, with our insurance had concerns, so we've changed the system. Residents come in; they'll put their they'll put their items into the back of the trash truck, and then staff will you know dispose of it that way. And there should be uh, a couple free dump weekends this this year. Correct. Right? What, what correct. are you anticipating? Well, correct. Uh, I don't. I off the top of my head, I don't know the exact dates, but we'll have two weekends in the spring. And then we'll have a weekend in the fall. Uh, residents can come in, get rid of metal, um, construction debris, which we normally don't take. Uh, we take donations. There's uh, usually uh, outside uh, organizations that'll take things like bicycles or computers and those things that can be donated um, and reused. So we set up the complex as you come in. You'll be directed depending on what you have and you'll dispose. We also, uh, we will have a electronics weekend which will be uh, the residents will pay to dispose of. They'll have to register ahead. Uh, we still have to set the date for that. And uh, the county has not given us a date yet, but usually they do a hazardous waste weekend, which allows you to get rid of gasoline and pesticides and old paint. Uh, that's date. They, we're still waiting for a date from Montgomery County as to when they're going to do it. Um, but So we do a lot of uh, different uh, things down at the complex. Just a question I, I think some residents may have about the, the, the Cagle Complex, how it came to be. Was that all like a large estate or what, what was it that, how, you know, uh, originally, it, it, originally it was kind of like a uh, piece of like farm property out, at, quote, in the country as it was described to me. That was actually very rural, uh, like farm right. area when, you know, in the late 30s when that was originally developed. Um, as normal, we've built up around it. And the police used to use it as a target range, too. Yes, right? the shooting range is still there. It's not utilized anymore, but the facility's still there. The police do train there. Uh, they do use that, uh, that area down there. And as I said, they, use, uh, they have some other areas that they use on the complex for, for storage and different things. So it's a very busy facility. And if resident wants to get in touch with Public Works, what are some ways or what's the best way to do it? The best way, uh, if you have a general question and you're not sure, is our 610-645-6150 line. That's the direct number to the Public Works office from there. Um, staff can either direct you to the right uh, department or they can take, take um, and issue a work order uh, that will go to the, whoever the supervisor is that needs to address it. We also have a reported app which is very efficient because that has a uh, software built into it that it sorts out who it needs to go to. Uh, granted, I get copied on all of them, but it goes to the, to the supervisor and the crew leaders that would be responsible, so it's direct. Uh, no delay that you know I could be here filming this program, not see it, and something of importance comes up. Just a friendly reminder to the public, if you have a gas leak or an electrical issue, please call that utility hotline. That's an emergency call them. Or if you see someone speeding down your street or making an illegal turn, call the police directly. Uh, we're, we're not able to handle that. It could be, you know, a couple hours. could be if it comes in over the weekend, we don't see it. Um, so please uh, call them and do that. Another thing is uh, we have the Retriever app um, that uh, you can call to have materials picked up clothing and so forth when we're not having the free dump weekends, those type of things. And then there's one other one that I personally uh, need. It's called Recycle Buddy. Uh, it, it's embarrassing. I can never remember which week is week uh, for recycling uh, when my wife asks. So I pick up the Recycling Buddy app on my phone. I look and I tell her this week's commingle or this week is uh, paper. 
So it's a very good yeah, app. Yeah, I printed out the recycling schedule. I put it on my fridge. But what it, it, the embarrassing thing for me is my eyesight just keeps going. Where so I, I sit there and look at it like that for about a minute or so to figure out which if it's commingled or, or paper. But um, you know, great points I, if, about you know contacting the township emergencies, things like that. Like you know, if you see a spy craft, a spy balloon, or something, not yeah. something to talk to public works about. I don't think our police can shoot something like that down. So you know, make sure you, you run it up the chain of command. Yeah. Yeah. Start a little higher than yeah than the reported app. Yeah, uh, so there's seven divisions in public public works. Um, we'll try to get through them if we can in the next 14 minutes or so. Um, let's talk about. Uh, I guess let's try to see if we could talk, uh, talk through fleet because we got about two minutes before we go to a break. So fleet is composed of nine employees, and what we do is we have about 485 pieces of equipment. So the fleet department's responsible for every piece of equipment, uh, such as, not every piece of equipment, smaller stuff, it's handled internally in each department, but police cars, the dump trucks, uh, the, the, the tractors and lawn equipment that you see out on the, uh, on the fields, fleet department's responsible for them. 90% of our work's done internally in-house by staff. Larger projects that will take too much time, a decision's made, and they may go back to the vendors, uh, to, the, you know, to, the, to, the, to the manufacturers, or dealers, um, or if it's uh, under warranty, it'll go back to those. But we handle everything from uh, changing axles and brakes uh, and doing inspections to rebuilding motors, if you know, like top ends of motors and stuff like that. And the electric vehicles, I think the, um, the fleet tested out right a recycling truck recently. We did, we did. Um, the results weren't what we would have liked. We um, currently, what the market offers doesn't meet our needs, but we are constantly evaluating all the electric vehicles from, from trash trucks all the way down to passenger vehicles and seeing what will fit within our uh, organization and when it will fit. And we are starting the beginnings of our infrastructure to support uh, powering those those vehicles. Yeah, I think it's important to note you said when it will fit. Like as technology keeps improving and developing, it, you know there will be a time when it's a good fit. The recycling truck, I think the one we tested cost eight hundred and fifty thousand, which is three or four times the cost of a regular truck. It's four so, times the cost, yeah. and uh, unfortunately, it was only able to do about half of the route assigned for it that day uh, before it went before it had to be charged. Wow. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for segment number one. Please stay tuned. We'll come back with uh, the other six divisions of Public Works next. Hi, welcome back to the Public Works Pipeline. I'm your host, Mike McKeon, and we are here with Lower Marion Township's Public Works Director, Paul McElhenney. Uh, this is basically going to be the speed round uh, because we've got to cover six divisions in the next 12 minutes or so. So, Paul, Shade Tree Division, what's up with that? Shade Tree Division, uh, it's composed of uh, nine individuals. We have a uh, certified arborist uh, and uh, as the leadership of the division. We're, they're responsible for the trees within the right-of-way and also within the parks. They help in the parks because we have the parks department, so the parks department will utilize them for larger takedowns and when they need help. But when it comes to the right-of-way, essentially right-of-way is a legal uh, entity that is given uh, by property owners so for the public good, so that utilities can be put in and stuff like as uh, utilities, underground uh, water, those type of things. That could be like a road verge, like by your right. sidewalk. Right, yeah, so usually rule of thumb is 15 to 20 feet off center line of road, but the, it can vary and it's always good to check. But our, um, the trees that fall within that 15, 20 foot or greater fall under the responsibility of the shade tree division to maintain for safety. Um, so they'll, they'll trim them and remove them as needed. The residents um, can, are not allowed to remove those trees. Uh, if they would like a tree removed or trimmed, they can contact our shade tree division um, to, have the, to have that done, have it inspected, have it removed. But the shade tree division will maintain those trees for health and safety. Uh, if a tree falls that's in the, in, from the right-of-way, shade tree division will then remove that tree in its entirety. 
They will clear the roadway. They will clear the properties. If it crosses the street, they will clean that all up. If a private tree falls from behind the right-of-way line and, and, and covers a road, say it falls on uh, Woodbine Avenue and it, it crosses the street, Shade Tree Division's tasked with opening up the roadway. Same as the utilities, they'll do the same thing if it comes down on the power lines and peak goes out and they move it. What then occurs is the tree is pushed, the, the remains, and some of it might be taken, but the majority of it's left, but it's put on both sides of the roadway. Um, and then that, that's basically the, the scope of it, right? Because correct. I think people say, you know, is Shade Tree responsible for every tree in the township? And they are not. So if, if the tree falls and it comes down in your property and there's logs left, it then becomes, by state law, becomes that property owner's to, to address. So your pro it may have come from across the street. It was not a right-of-way tree. It th then becomes your responsibility to remove it. Uh, same as private property, those trees that fall between you and your neighbor. Uh, branches fall, tree falls into your yard. Actually, by state law, it becomes your, your property to address, yours to deal with. And the branch of township staff that would handle that's actually, that gets into the building and planning department and not public works, right? Yeah, if there's a question about the neighbor's tree, it looks unhealthy, it looks threatening, so forth, um, then that becomes a private property, uh, like a property maintenance issue and goes to the building and planning department. And there are certain parameters that they need to follow um, and as to what they can and cannot do and influence. Now the facilities department, I think there's about six employees in facilities. What, what does facilities do in general? Well, in general, facilities takes care of all the buildings that you see throughout the township. The libraries, the township building, the Kegel complex, they're doing, they're doing the uh, the day-to-day -day repairs to keep things moving. Um, they don't get, they don't do the capital projects. They may help on the capital projects, but they're taking care of uh, keeping keeping the lights on and keeping everything moving along. So all the township buildings, they basically, yeah, like you say, keep keeping going. Yes, yes. How about you know the electrical division? Four employees there. What, what's electrical do? Well, electrical is. Um, well, let me clarify. It has four employees. Facilities has six. It's Some kind of, of a same, kind of yeah. a misnomer because. Same supervisor runs runs those, and he also runs sewer and too. Sewer yeah. too, so it's a little misnomer. But that said, um, the uh, electrical division they take care of all the street lights that you see, and they take care of the traffic signals that you see. Those type of things they do do some of the minor electrical in the buildings and stuff. But their main focus is the street lights and the traffic lights. And with the traffic lights, they're programming those controllers. And so uh, actually, they're out there with the laptop and program. So it's a little more complicated than turning switches on and off, that type of stuff. So let's say the Eagles win the Super Bowl, right? And the commissioners have a bright idea. Hey, we have an ordinance. Let's turn all the traffic lights in the township green for 20 minutes to celebrate. Um, would that be something that the electrical division could do? Keeping in mind it could be They could, hazardous. but I, we, yeah. we would probably uh, advise against okay. it, having okay. all green lights all, all directions. But, yes, they would be able to do that, uh, program it. They can override uh, each of the lights and retime the lights. But even with retiming the lights, we need to – they work with hand-in-hand -hand with PennDOT because each, each traffic light is permitted, has a permit with it, which means PennDOT um, – is the directive on how much time things take and things like that. So any changes, walk times and all, we have to get permitted through PennDOT and then our staff will do the programming. Okay. The sanitary sewer department, we talked about that, that's the same supervisor also oversees that. There's about 18 employees who some may be shifting and other, have other roles too. What does sanitary sewer do? Well, sanitary sewer, we, essentially we're broken into two groups. We have an internal group and an external group as we like to classify it. The external group takes care of all the pipes uh, that, that carry the sewage, the, all the sewer mains and the force mains. They don't take care of the private home laterals. Each homeowner is responsible for their lateral to the connection point and the connection at the main. You're responsible for that. Our, our external group takes care of that main and all the, and the force mains. They televise them. They clean them. Um, they, they prepare them if they need to be slip line, those type of things. Um, they will work with the highway department if we have a break, like we, we had yesterday. They do that. Our internal group, they take care of the 18 pump stations. Uh, people flush, it goes to a pump station, it then has to be, pro it has to then be 
pushed or pumped. Um, they take care of the. And it the gets pumped into Philadelphia, Philadelphia right? Yeah. Right. But there's 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 electronic there's electronic controls. There's pumps. There's a, there's a very variable amount of things that they need to do, and they take care of that. Then it goes to the Philadelphia. It gets all gets pumped to Philadelphia to be treated. Now, highway. We talked about this at the last show, which I'm sure everyone watched. So we really don't need to get into it in a lot of detail here. But that was uh, that takes care of paving, uh, also winter storm removal. They're out there with the plows. They uh, take care of the storm sewer pipes. They take care. They help with the sanitary <laughs> sewer pipes. They they do all the stop signs, all the street painting that you see, all the guide rails that are up. Um, they fix walls, they fix bridge culverts. There's a ton of things that you don't see, and the reason you don't see it is because it's we keep it uh, functioning and repaired. And they, they work on, I think it's 860.9 lane miles. That's a lot, right? Yes, yes. Um, it's So that's 860 lane miles is what we have to keep track of for paving. We have to actually that plus private roads when it comes to some private roads when it comes to snow plowing. So uh, it's it's a lot of miles. Right. And I think 32 employees right now in uh, in highway. So last uh, topic here we could talk all day about. It. We'll talk a little trash here with the refuse department about uh, 42 employees, I think, last year. And we're up to 45 for this year. Correct. And w with that. If there's an offset. We usually uh, try to have on hand 10 part-time employees so that we we cut the budget for our part-time employees but kept the budget for, uh, we raised the budget for full-time employees uh, because we're having um, issues with trying to get part-time employees. Uh, it's hard to fill those positions. Uh, we're looking for part-time uh, drivers, part-time handlers, you know, laborers. Uh, so we offset it a little bit to try to have a little more staff on hand because with COVID and the last couple of years, we've really had a challenge with um, filling the roles daily and we've been borrowing from all the other divisions within, within Public Works. We've also been borrowing from the Parks Department to keep, keep trash moving because uh, that's, that's the one thing that residents see daily. Right. They, they put out the trash, they see it, they, they feel it. So we do our best to make sure that we keep it picked up. And there's on really been no service disruptions, at least that I've known about, which I, I think is fantastic. We've, we, we, we've had our challenges, but we've done our best to uh, minimize uh, the challenge and the, the difficulties. Uh, as I like to say, you, knock on wood, you haven't seen us on the news like some of the other uh, Garbage and stuff piling up. up. Yeah. Some of the others, some of our surrounding neighbors. So we've done well that way. Um, but that's because we have um, cooperation from other divi other departments within the township and the divisions within Public Works. Our staff, you know, understands and they take on the challenge and they fill in where they're needed. And refuse picks up regular waste and then also recycling. We have a, a dual stream recycling now. Where does the, the regular refuse end up? Our regular refuse currently goes to Cavanta uh, up in Conshohocken. They, they transport it out. We, we, we pack it into their trucks. They take out uh, the 100 yard trailers, several of them a day. We do that. Um, and that, that's incinerated, right? Yes, that's incinerated trash to steam plant. Up Which in is Cuchigan. much better for the environment than a landfill because you don't have it giving off methane gas for long periods. There, there's, there's been comparisons done. Um, last time we had a report done, it, it recommended or is that currently the way in which we're handling that is more environmentally friendly. We're always looking and reviewing just in case we are able to find a different system, but last time it was it was more environmentally friendly. Is it, does the commingle, does that end up at J.P. Mascaro and Birdsboro? It, oh. it, it, it ends up at J.P. Mascaro. It, it could go to two different plants depending on their demand, but yes, the commingle goes to them and then they separate it and they bundle it and they recycle it. Uh, on the secondary market. And the paper goes to a processor in Philadelphia. It right? goes to Newman Paper. They process it for us. We actually get paid for that product, um, which helps offset the cost to the residents for picking up their trash. Right. We do very well with the uh, paper recycling. We get a very nice amount back that helps reduce the solid waste fee, which is an enterprise fund. And if we did single stream, the paper that we got, what I think would be so uh, dirty and corroded from the other 
commingled, that we wouldn't be able to get a nice uh, return on that. Well, if we did if we did single stream, then we would be paying to get rid of that paper because we'd pay to get rid of the recycles, the commingle. So it would become part of the commingle, and we'd have to pay. So we would lose the income that we received, and we would also pay to, for the weight that we were generating. Oh, Paul, thank you very much. As you know, I think I could talk trash with you all day, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. I'd like to thank everyone for watching, um, and you know, tune into our next show.